Today, we're showcasing our sister company, WP Forms. Do you want to create a professional looking business email address for free? So in this video, I'll walk you through how to create a free business email account. In order to get the free business email account, you need to already have a hosting account and a website or a domain name and a website. If you're already set up with a hosting provider, like say Bluehost or SiteGround, then you can skip to the next part where I'll walk you through how to actually set up your email. Otherwise, let me walk you through setting up a hosting provider where you also can get your domain name for free as well. To get started with Bluehost, you want to go to wpbeginner forward slash refer forward slash Bluehost. And that is our affiliate link. We will get a commission if you use that link for us. So once you get set up, you can see this special page and you see that normally it's about $9 a month, nine or $10 a month. With this link, you also get a free domain for the first year. You'll also get free SSL certificate and that's just says SSL stands for secured socket layer. And that just makes sure that your website is secure and encrypted between you and your readers or your visitors. So super important to have, and they already have that automatically. You also get one click in WordPress installation. So before it was pretty simple to do, it was like a five minute installation. Now it's even simpler. And then you get 24 seven support. So you have any issues with your website, they're there to help. So let's go ahead and click on the get started now button. And right out of the gate, I always like to, when I'm sharing this with friends who want to set up a website, they're always like, okay, well, which one do I use? The choice plus is probably a little bit too large for you to have to worry about. That's for somebody who's really into several websites and things like that. I would say you want to look at between the plus and the basic. And a couple of the major differences between the basic and the plus is the basic, you only get one website and you have a few other items there to look at. Whereas with the plus you get unlimited websites. And so this is the choice you'll want to make. When I talk to my friends, I always say, now when you start your first website, it is more than likely that you're going to create more websites or you're going to have friends or family members who say, hey, can you make me a website too? So a lot of times for me, it was always worth it to do just the next step up so that I can do unlimited websites. The other thing you wanna look at when you're choosing which one to use. If you notice a little bit further down here, you also have email accounts. The basic comes with five email addresses that you can use. And then the plus is unlimited. So you can set up as many emails that you, as you want. For instance, this would work for sales, email operations, your own names in everybody in the business and things like that. So pick the one that works best for you. For this tutorial, I'll simply choose the basic. Now from here, this is where you create your new domain name or the website where you're going to send people to. So now you can put it in, put in what you want your website name to be. And when you click next, it will either come back and let you know if it's available. If it is available, it will give you this big green button where it says, or a big green banner that says it's available. If it's not available, they'll give you some ideas of some other website names to try. So scrolling down, you'll want to fill out all of this information. And then when you scroll down to the package information, then this is where you need to make a decision on how much savings you want. And you have your choice between 36 months, 24 or 12 months. And that gives you the separation between 12 month savings worth of savings. And then it resets to the normal amount or you get three years at 275. So something you need to look at. But you notice that the domain name registration is free and the Let's Encrypt is free as well. So just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm gonna do basic right there. And then scrolling down, there's some package extras and you really can uncheck all of these. Most of these items you can either choose to do later or there are plugins or the Legos that I mentioned that you can add on later on if you want. And then scrolling down, you see the total savings for this is at least 50% off. And this is our total amount. So you just want to go through here and enter credit card information. You want to go ahead and read their auto renewal terms. That's just letting you know when it renews, it will renew at the standard price. And you'll want to say that you, you want to go ahead and read that. And then once you're done reading it, you can submit this. And then once it goes through, actually create your website. Great. Once you've logged into your hosting account, you can set up your email. Over on the left, we see email and office. From this screen, simply click create. And this is where you can create your email. So from here, you want to select the domain. You should only have one since you just created this. And this is where your email address will be connected to. So for instance, we'll do our username and it will be John Doe at start your 
wpsite.com. So you put in yours. You also want to enter a password. You want to make sure that this is a good secure password. You can even ask them to generate one. Now let's click create and it'll go out and actually create the email. We see a success here. And when I scroll down, see the John Doe here, you can check email and then this will open up a new tab and then this will be your webmail login. This is what you'll use to always log in and check your email. You can choose a couple of web clients to check your email with. You can select this one. It's usually the easiest one to use and then open it up. And then this will be where you check your email. Now going back to the dashboard here, you can also set up connect devices. And this is where you can set up a device for say your outlook on your desktop or on your mobile phone. So scrolling through here will give you some instructions for how to set it up if you prefer to do it that way. And then this is a very similar process if you're using any other hosting provider like SiteGround, HostGator, InMotion, anything like that. It's pretty much the same way you set, set it up and connect your devices as you need to. Now method two is not a free method, but is another good method to use for business. And I'll walk you through that with method two. We're going to be using Google workspace, which is the new term for G suite. And this method is pretty good because you have not just your email account, but then you also have Google docs, sheets, more of a paid version. You have a higher amount of storage space. So you get 30 gigs on their basic plan of storage space. So if that's something that you need, then that's a pretty good deal to get that as well. The other cool thing is if you already have Gmail or if you already are familiar with it, it's the same interface. And then let's just take a look at the pricing just to see the difference. So you see that you can do several different ones. Usually the business starter is perfect to get started because you get the custom email address that you need. You get the 30 gigabytes of cloud storage, which should last you for quite a while and a few other standards. You could do the business standard, which is their most popular. And then that takes it up to two terabytes. So if you really need some cloud storage, then that might work for you. So we're going to choose the business starter. You want to say just you, unless you do have multiple people, because if you say like two through nine, they will charge you because it's $6 per month per person for this setup. We'll click next out your information. And then from here, it says, does, does your business currently have a business name? If you already have one, then say, yeah, I already have one. And then I'll show you how I'll show you how to connect your current domain name with Google. If you don't, you can say, no, I need one. And then I'll ask you what you want your business name to be. If you do say, no, you need one. And then when you put in what you want your business name to be, if it's available, they will go ahead and start the registration for that domain name. If it's not, it'll say it's not available. And then they'll give you some suggestions on other domain names. The going rate at this moment is about $12 a year for a domain name through Google Workspace and Google Domains. And that includes privacy. For this one, we actually do have a domain name. So I'll show you when you have a domain name, what you need to do. You put in the domain name that you have. They're asking, is this the one that you want to set up? We say yes, next. And then here is where you want to set up the email address for that. Give it a password. Say I'm not a robot and we'll go ahead and agree and continue. You'll want to review it. Know that it does recur monthly and we can go ahead. If you have a promotional code, you can use that here. We can say next. You see, you can start your 14 days are free, limited to 10 users. That's great. So you can test it out. See if you like it. Go ahead and fill out all of this information, including your credit card. Great. Once it's set up, you can say continue. It says it's ready to set everything up. We'll walk you through the steps. Go ahead and continue the setup. Now you'll need to verify that you do own the domain name. So we can click verify and it'll give you some code that we'll need to add. From here, there are a few ways that you can verify your domain name. You can set up a TXT record on your hosting platform. You can create a C name. You can do a meta tag. If you already have your website set up, the meta tag would be pretty easy or you could upload an HTML. We're going to create a TXT record. So we'll click next. Now we're going to verify with a TXT record. I can copy this. And the cool thing is it knows that we're at Bluehost. So it goes through and it actually shows you the steps that you need to do, which is what we'll do now. So let's head back over to our Bluehost account and we want to go to domains and from the drop down, let's go to DNS. And now we want to scroll all the way down till we find the TXT records. This is the one we want. So let's go ahead and click add record. And for the record, we need to put an at sign and then we need to paste in that value that we got from Google and we can leave that. That's fine. So let's click save. Great. Now we need to go back 
to Google and we need to say verify my domain. Now it says it could take as long as 15 minutes to verify that, but once it does, you'll see that it's verified. And now you can create a user for your team. You don't want to do that because then they will charge you another $6 per month per user. Now we need to activate the Gmail for your email. So we'll click on that. So they want to activate it. So you can say I've added whatever emails I need to, which we did in the beginning and we're ready to receive it. So we'll click through here and now we need to route the MX records. They go through and they do a really good job of showing you step by step on how to do that. So now we need to set up the MX records on Bluehost. So let's go back to the domain section and under the drop down, let's go to DNS. And just like where we were with the TXT records, we're going to set up our MX records. So we need to scroll down so we see MX. We want to remove the mail one. So we'll click on the little three dots and click remove. So we need to come over here and click add record. And from here we can go back to the Gmail part. You see the priority. You want to set up the priority. You want to set up the host record and you want to set up the po points to and the time to live setting or the TTL. So we'll just go through this process. So this one is our first priority. So we'll do priority one, do host record points to, and I pasted that first one in time to live is one click save. Now let's do it for all of the others. Great. Once we ha have all of these set up, we can go back to our Gmail area. And now we can come down here and say activate Gmail. So now we'll go through, activate it for us, make sure that we've set all of the MX server addresses up correctly. Now this part took a little bit of time and it actually came back and gave me errors. So once you do this, you might want to give your hosting provider a little bit of time before you click the check and retry activation. And then once it all becomes active, then it just pops to the next screen. If you have more users, you can create more users here or I don't have any more, so I'm going to skip that for now. And now you see this area where you can test out different areas of your Google workspace. So we know that the Gmail is activated. We can even send a test mail and we'll send it. And now you see, we can go to Gmail down here. Perfect. And now this is our Gmail. This is a little test mail. And now you're set up with Google Workspaces Gmail. And then if you want to automate and streamline your business processes from your WordPress website, the best way to do that is by installing WP Forms. With WP Forms, you can add a simple contact form page. You can also do robust things like accept payments from clients. You can do job form submissions and just so much more for your business. To get started, just head over to WPForms.com. Do forward slash WP beginner and you'll get the best discount on WP forms. And now make sure you check out this video next where I walk you through how to set up your own website. This is perfect if you're just getting started with your domain name and you need a website set up. I'll walk you through step by step on setting it up. That includes installing the theme, adding your pages and adding a contact form. And I'll see you over there.